Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. In the previous video of the oscillator, we understood the working principle of the oscillator. And based on the type of feedback, we had seen the different types of oscillators. Now one such oscillator is the RC phase shift oscillator. So in this oscillator, the RC circuit is used in the feedback path. Now this RC phase shift oscillator generates the stable sine waves and usually they are used in the low frequency generations typically in the range of audio frequencies. So in this RC phase shift oscillator, the amplifier provides a 180 degree of phase shift. And usually either transistor or the inverting op-amp is used for the amplification. Now in the previous video, we had seen that to get the sustained oscillations, the loop gain of the oscillator should be equal to 1. And the phase shift that is introduced by the amplifier in the feedback circuit should be equal to 0 or 360 degree. So to get the sustained oscillations in this RC phase shift oscillator, this feedback path should also provide a 180 degree of phase shift so that the overall phase shift that is introduced by this amplifier in the feedback circuit is equal to zero. And by tuning the gain of this amplifier and the feedback circuit, it is possible to achieve the loop gain that is equal to one. So now let us understand in this RC phase shift oscillator, how this feedback circuit provides the 180 degree of phase shift. And before we see that, first of all, let us quickly see the simple RC circuit. So this circuit over here is nothing but the high pass filter and it is also known as the phase lead circuit because in this circuit, the output voltage used to lead the input voltage. So first of all, let us find out the transfer function of this RC circuit. So here, this output by input can be given as R divided by R minus JXC where x is nothing but 1 by omega c. So we can write this expression as r divided by r minus j divided by omega c. And by dividing the numerator and the denominator by the factor of r, we can write this expression as 1 divided by 1 minus j divided by omega c r. So if we find the phase shift, then the phase shift 5 can be given as 0 minus 10 inverse of minus 1 by omega CR that is equal to 10 inverse of 1 by omega CR and as we know 1 by omega C is nothing but XC so we can say that the phase shift 5 is equal to 10 inverse of XC by R so as you can see over here in this circuit the phase shift depends upon the value of R and the value of capacitance C. So for very small values of XC, the phase shift of the circuit will be equal to 0. And whenever R is equal to 0, at that time, this term XC by R will become infinite. So at that time, the phase shift that is provided by the circuit will be equal to 90 degree. So in this way, this RC circuit provides the phase shift between 0 to 90 degree. And theoretically, to get a 180 degree phase shift, we need to cascade the two such circuits. So each circuit theoretically should provide a 90 degree of phase shift. But like I said, to get a 90 degree of phase shift, the value of R used to be a very small or theoretically it should be zero. But whenever R is zero, at that time, the gain that is provided by the circuit will be equal to zero. So practically, it is not possible to achieve a 180 degree of phase shift just by using the two RC stages. So in practical case, instead of two RC stages, we require more stages. So using the three stages, it is possible to achieve the 180 degree of phase shift. So here, each stage will provide a 60 degree of phase shift and the overall phase shift that is introduced by these three stages will be equal to 180 degree. But because of the loading effect of the other stages, the actual phase shift that is provided by each stage will be slightly different. But if you see the oral phase shift, then the oral phase shift will be equal to 180 degree. So in this way, by using the multiple stages, it is possible to achieve the 180 degree of phase shift. And in practical RC phase shift oscillator, usually more than three stages are used to get a stable phase shift. For example, if you use a four stages, then each stage will provide approximately 45 degree of phase shift. So combining all the four stages, we can get a 180 degree of phase shift. So in this RC phase shift oscillator, like I said, 
the amplifier is used in the inverting configuration so it provides a 180 degree of phase shift and through this feedback circuit or through this RC stages remaining 180 degree of phase shift is introduced so the overall phase shift that is introduced by the amplifier and the feedback circuit will be equal to zero and by setting the gain of this amplifier and the feedback circuit it is possible to achieve the loop gain of unity so here is the RC phase shift oscillator circuit which is designed using the op amp and the same circuit can be redrawn like this so as you can see over here this op amp is configured in the inverting mode so it used to provide the 180 degree of phase shift while in the feedback circuit this rc stages used to provide a 180 degree of phase shift so in this way the overall phase shift that is introduced will be equal to 360 degree or 0 degree now in this rc phase shift oscillator the attenuation that is introduced by this feedback stage is equal to 1 by 29 so to get a unity loop gain the gain that is provided by this op amp should be equal to 29 now this circuit will provide a unity gain only at one particular frequency and at only one particular frequency only the overall phase shift of the circuit will be equal to zero and if three stages are used then this frequency f can be given by the expression 1 by 2 pi rc times under root 6 so at this particular frequency only the loop gain of the circuit will be equal to 1 as well as the overall phase shift of the circuit will be equal to 0 degree and if more than 3 stages are used then in general for n number of stages this frequency f can be given by the expression 1 by 2 pi rc times under root 2n so if 4 number of rc stages are used in that case this expression of f will be equal to 1 by 2 pi rc time under root 8 and for 3 stages it will be equal to 1 by 2 pi rc times under root 6 now some of you might be wondering that how we have got this expression of the frequency as well as why the attenuation of this rc stage is equal to 1 by 29 so let us derive these two expressions very quickly so here the same rc stages are drawn separately now here let us assume that v in is the input to this rc stage and v out is the output of this rc circuit now in this rc circuit just by using the mesh analysis method we can find the relationship between output and input or we can also use the nodal analysis method to get the relationship between output and input so by using any of these two method we can find the relationship between output and input and if you find it then you will get that this v out by v in for this rc network will be equal to minus 1 by 29 so let us quickly derive this relationship between output and input so here let us assume that the voltage at this node is v1 and the voltage at this node is equal to v2 and i1 i2 and i3 are the currents which are flowing through these three capacitors so here what we will do we will find the value of this v2 v1 i2 and i1 and we will find these four expressions in terms of the output voltage and using these four expressions we will find the relationship between output and input so first of all let us concentrate at this node v2 so at this node v2 we can write this voltage v2 is equal to this voltage vo plus the drop across this reactance xc that is equal to i3 times minus jxc now if you look over here this current i3 is flowing through this resistor r that means this output voltage v out is nothing but i3 times r or we can say that this current i3 is equal to vo divided by r and if we put the value of xc as 1 by omega c then we can write this expression of v2 as vo divided by j omega cr plus vo that means v2 is equal to vo times 1 plus 1 by j omega cr so in this way we got the expression of v2 in terms of the v out now similarly let us find out the expression of i2 in terms of v out so if we apply the kcl at this node then we can write i2 is equal to v2 by r plus this current i3 now we already found the value of this v2 and we know that i3 is equal to vo by r so we can write the expression of i2 as vo by r 
इंटू वन प्लस वन बाय जे ओमेगा सी आर प्लस वी ओ बाय आर एंड इफ यू सिंप्लीफाइड देन वी कैन राइट वी ओ बाय आर मल्टीप्लाय बाय टू प्लस वन बाय जे ओमेगा सी आर सो इन दिस वे वी गॉट द टू एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ वी टू एंड आई टू इन टर्म्स ऑफ द आउटपुट वोल्टेज सिमिलरली एट दिस नोट वी वन Let us find out the expression of V1 and I1 in terms of the output voltage V out. So at this node V1, we can write this voltage V1 as V2 plus I2 divided by J omega C. That is the drop across this reactance axis. Now we already know the value of this V2 and I2. So if we put the value of this V2 and I2, then we can write the expression of V1 as V O times. One plus one by J omega C R plus V O by R times two plus one by J omega C R multiplied by one by J omega C. And if we solve this expression, then the value of this V one will be equal to V O times one plus three by J omega C R minus One by omega square c square r square. Similarly, by applying the KCL at this node V one, let us find out the expression of I one in terms of this output voltage V out. So applying KCL at this node, we can write current I one will be equal to V one by r plus this current I two. Now we already know the value of V one and I two. So let us put the value of V1 and I2 in this expression, and we can write this current I1 as V O by R times 1 plus 3 by J omega C R minus 1 by omega square C square into R square plus the value of I2 will be equal to V O by R times 2 plus 1 by J omega C R. So if we simplify this expression, then the value of I1 will be equal to V O by R times three plus four by J omega C R minus one by omega square C square into R square. So now so far we got four expressions of V two, I two, V one, and I one in terms of the output voltage. Now the only expression that is remained is the relationship between input voltage and the output voltage. So now let us write down the expression of V one. In terms of this I1 and V1, so now we can write this input voltage V in as voltage V1 plus the drop across this capacitance Xc that is equal to I1 divided by J times omega C, and let us put the value of V1 and I1 in this expression. So the input voltage V in will be equal to V out plus 1 plus 3 by J omega C R. Minus one by omega square c square into r square. So here we have just put the value of v1. Now let us put the value of i1 in this expression. And as we know, i1 is v out by r times one by j omega c. That is this one by j omega c into three plus four by j omega c r minus one by omega square c square into r square. So if we simplify this expression, then we can write this input voltage V in as V out plus one plus six by J omega C R minus five by omega square C square into R square minus one by J omega cube C cube into R cube. So this is the relationship between input and output voltage. Now the output voltage will only have a real part. that means the imaginary part of this expression should be equal to zero so by equating the imaginary part to the zero we can write 6 by omega cr minus 1 by omega cube c cube into r cube that is equal to zero or we can simplify this expression as omega square c square into r square will be equal to 1 by 6 that means omega will be equal to 1 by under root 6 times rc and if we write this expression in terms of the frequency then we can say that f will be equal to 1 by 2 pi rc times under root 6 
So now let us find out the gain of the circuit at this particular frequency. Now once the imaginary part is zero, then the expression can be written as V in is equal to VO times 1 minus phi by omega square c square into r square. Now in this expression, let us put omega is equal to 1 by under root 6 times rc. So if we put the value of this omega, then this input voltage Vn will be equal to Vo times 1 minus phi by 1 by 6 times r square c square multiplied by r square into c square. So if we simplify it, then the input voltage Vn will be equal to Vo times 1 minus 30. Or we can say that V out by V in is equal to minus 1 by 29. So in this way, we can say that this RC network used to provide a attenuation of 1 by 29. And here the negative sign indicates that this RC network used to provide a 180 degree of phase shift. So in this way, here by tuning the value of R and C in the feedback network, it is possible to get a oscillation at particular frequency. Now generally in this uh, RC phase shift oscillators, the value of R is remained fixed and the only value of capacitor is changed to get the desired frequency of oscillation. So here in this RC phase shift oscillator, all the capacitors are ganged together. So just by changing the one capacitor, it is possible to tune all the capacitors. And in this way, it is possible to tune the circuit at one particular frequency. So this is all about the RC phase shift oscillator. So I hope in this video you understood how we can design this oscillator using the OPAM. So if you have any question or suggestion, do let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.